Greetings, Bill here. Um, today I'm going to continue with uh, information and talking about the uh, Essence by Tetalis Razor. Uh, there's a lot of buzz going on about this. It's it's uh, uh, pretty typical uh, of of new products to see uh, a lot of information going around. Um, one of the things I said on my last video, I wanted to make sure I clarify. Um, uh, I did not by any means uh, intend to, uh, if it came across that way, to say abandon your straight razor in favor of this. I love my straight razors. Uh, I'm probably not gonna stop buying them. I got a couple more things in my mind that I want uh, before before my co collection is rounded out and I use them. Now at one time, at one time, I had stopped buying straight razors because what I found was I found that uh, the edges were, were just not quite good enough after I picked this up and started shaving with this uh, with Feather Pros, I really, really like this. And well, my other Chevette's too, okay? And until I adapted my skills, my honing skills and my style to get my straights to a place where, and I stand by what I said, uh, one of these or one of these, with one of these is the sharpest thing you will ever put to your face. Now, there's people who disagree with me. There's people who say that they hone as well and they hone better and it, you know, it blows these out of the water. Yeah, okay. Sure. You got a guy who hones your razors who says that he out hones this. You keep going to him. I think you really should keep going to him. But don't ever pick up one of these because then you're gonna probably have to call him a liar. Anyhow, uh, my straight razors, uh, uh, I found, and it's a whole nother set of videos uh, for that, uh, for honing. But uh, however your method of honing is, and I've, I've shaved with razors honed by other guys, and for me, what it was was, does the true state razor does the edge on that get good enough that you have a pleasure uh in your shave and it's not uh something that you just kind of go through and worry about well am i dropping enough am i doing this am i doing that um now with my straight razors every time i get good enough with a straight razor uh, then I'm happy with it. Okay, is it is it have the level of sharpness that that you can get with one of these things? Not in my mind. Okay, uh, so uh, if if you are there, whether it's with with uh, 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 vintage straights or whether it's there with modern made straights or whether it's even with gold dollars if you were happy with that you keep doing that okay uh but then it came around to money on this and that kind of stuff and it always does okay and i uh drew some comparisons between between this and the cost of of nicer straight razors uh and always comes up well you know i can get one of those for 15 dollars, and yeah you can get you can get a copy of this, something that looks pretty much just like this off the internet for $15. But what you're not going to get is you're not going to get for this, you're not going to get machine stainless steel. And you're not, for damn sure, you're not going to get this. And when the Chinese come along and when the Chinese clo clone this or do whatever they do, okay, you are not going to get, you can't even tell, you cannot even tell where the joint is on this, where where the fit is on this, and and I'll I'll go be going through. It was I don't know if I showed you the right size. I'll be going through a couple of blades today uh, to show the blade change. 
but you just can't even look at how look at exactly how thin that is okay you just you are not gonna get that in pot metal i'm sorry <laughs> okay so uh good clean fresh hay when i had horses good clean fresh fresh hay was four dollars a bale okay now you can bargain around and you can wheel and deal all the way down to the stuff that's been through the horse already if you want okay but uh if you want the good clean fresh stuff you want and you can get whatever you want okay it does it does not matter to me so uh anyhow uh what i'm gonna do oh and i did say you know i thought about i thought about that uh my sandbox the place i hang out online is the shave den uh it's july upcoming is cinco de julio the uh the date where guys on the 30-day crew where they focus on where i practiced and learned based on the philosophy of the 30-day crew uh that you work on your skills and i practiced that and i learned a lot from that and one of the things that they did a long time ago was to do they kind of copied the and the first guy to do that and i call him uh the father of the stunt shave he's around slash mccoy many of them many of you may see him on the on the different forms he used popsicle sticks it was a great video when he did that but uh, you know i did a couple of shaves with one of these i don't know if i'll do one where you just staple you have a blade and a blade holder the second one i did i was actually pretty surprised about how well of a shave that i got with a double-edged blade stapled to two tongue depressors and shaving along with it uh so so no you don't gotta buy one of these okay so so let's be fair about that you can do whatever you want okay uh but my point here is to illustrate some of the niceties of this some of the things i like this i consider this a luxury piece i have been uh very blessed to have uh a lot of overtime to work in this calendar year i had uh uh, um, a fair amount of income that was available to spend at my discretion. And in addition to this, in addition to this, this calendar year, since I learned to hone to my satisfaction, I bought five nice European real straight razors. Okay. And, and they're not cheap either. Not to mention, I probably bought, you know, a half a dozen or so gold dollar razors to hone up and to uh, to play with and that kind of stuff. So this is not to the exclusion, but uh, if you are if you are in a place where you have not been able to get your honing up and you're sending your razors out to the guy that um, hones better than this, okay, and that's all that's all good. But if you finding that 25 or 30 or 35 or 40 dollars a pop for him to sharpen your razor is a little expensive it's going to add up and it's not going to be long before if you just want to have one razor this is not a bad open edge this is not a bad deal so uh i'm doing something that i haven't even loaded it before uh i had a i had a uh um feather pro super in here this is pretty easy to to uh i'm gonna figure out what side moves because you can't see it <laughs> okay so just kind of grippy along here slide it's magnets that holding that are holding it in in this slide and on this side you will find uh little different fittings for the different blades this takes this does take half a double edge it takes an injector and it takes the artist club style blade okay i just just i had a half of a snap blade from one of my other chevettes hanging around the gillette silver blue is my fave so i'm gonna kind of load this up it looks like there's a little bit of recesses in there for the bent tabs that come in here okay so i'm gonna kind of 
I'm gonna kind of put those bent tabs down into the recesses. And then what I'm gonna do is put something in that looks looks like that where where the the registration pins are in the the center holes and the bent tabs fall into the little recess in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of hold this with my thumb. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna slide this in. This is the slot that the registration plus the two pins go into. And I'm gonna hold hold that in place. You can actually, I had that, it had it caught a little bit. You could actually start it up a little bit and it kind of snaps into place. Let me see, see if I slid in, it wants to catch, but if you kind of start the edge past it, I'm not sure if I'm getting it on there. You start the edge past it. It just kind of, uh, make sure you're, make sure you're holding, holding that down well enough. Make sure you're holding that down well enough. It slipped up on me. It's a little bit hard to make sure you're seeing it. Uh, hold this blade up against the pins. Maintain it that way with your thumb and get the fit in there. Double check before you, before you totally hide the pin because once the magnet goes on there, it kind of stays and uh, slide that in there. Now, check your blade. That one looks like it's kind of kicked up a little bit at the bottom. I'm going to check it again. I've, I had a razor that had this kind of issue with the tendency to kick up. And it's important, I think, that you get that blade well pretty well tucked down in there okay because that's going to give some stability uh that's one of the things where on this where where i went with the tongue depressor and slash did the popsicle sticks and i seen other guys do the popsicles and blades flopping away on there so i did my prep okay and Uh, I did not, uh, I talked about muting the corners, uh, which I don't do on my other Chevettes because they have corner guards on there. But I did shave with this without muting the corners. But you could take this and you could mute the corners on that a little bit. But uh, So I'm going to go ahead and let's, let's see how it shaves. Low angle, light touch. Certainly better than the uh, popsicle stick razor. I like how the handle of this, I like the feel of, of how I can hold this. It's, uh, it's very nice, very comfortable. Wow, what a delightful feeling first pass that was.
I don't think it was delivering the efficiency of a Feather Pro Super, but it was very nice and very comparable to any other Chevette that I have used the GSB blade in. So, and I'll play over time. I'll play with a lot of different blades and I'll see what happens. Uh, and see, so I'm going to pull that blade out. Uh, get it up on camera. So you see what I'm doing. So you want to, want to remove the blade. You slide this off and take your thumb and slide it up to grab behind and you have the blade and then to kick that out you can just slide that up and that's as easy as that and that is um as easy it is as as it goes for when you're at the end of a shave that we've i talked and many people have commented about how when you close this up if you have a blade in there it it will hit this and it will dull that blade uh i didn't actually check it to see what where it hits with a with a DVE blade, I will it sometime. But still, it's, uh, now GSBs don't wipe them, okay? Uh, and be careful with holding uh, blades always. But it's that easy enough to take that apart and, and clean that. And mid-shave, I'm gonna take, I pop the two uh, initial guard blades out of here. This is the uh, uh, Feather Pro Guard. Uh, I found these pretty cool. Uh, I like to work with them. I like them. I didn't use them enough, okay? But I like the different guarded blades. Kai makes a bunch of them. It's another good thing about this Chevette is there's a huge option for you on blades. Uh, uh, but some people I, I read today were one of the gents does not really like the guarded blades, but uh, same thing applies here. Okay. So I'm just placing that blade into the, into the little recess there for that, holding it down against, down against the pins. And I'm gonna do the same, the same thing where I'm holding that, holding that blade a little bit together. I'm squeezing a little bit here, squeezing right here to keep that blade into position as I slide that in. And it slides, slides in right easy. So pass number two, uh, Feather Pro Guard. I haven't shaved with in, with these enough to uh, I will because I got I got a whole bunch of them. Uh, these are if you're starting out in open blade shaving, this might be an option. We'll find out my opinion a little bit more with this tool uh, after this pass. Definitely a little more carefree, okay? Right now, I'm gonna say these are a great option. Well, let's, let's see how the end of the pass feels like.
Okay. I do like the feel of that. It was not at all uncomfortable. It did deliver fill up. It picked it up. So uh, if, if, you, if you're not an open blade shaver, experienced open blade shaver, uh, I'm going to continue to recommend these. Originally, years ago, when I looked at these and I first saw these, uh, I thought, that's like a sissy thing, <laughs> okay? But, um, uh, I, you know, I think these I think these are a very, very good option for, for learning. So, same thing, uh, take it apart, that easy. Okay, blade down. Now, I'm going to do something that was kind of recommended against because I don't think these things are necessarily supposed to be. But in this tool here, I have a... Uh, uh, a feather light, which the height of this, you can see the height from bottom. Let's see. Bottom of the top. I don't know if you can catch that. The height of this is eight millimeters. The height of this is 7.4. The height of the feather super is 8.2. Okay. So this may, and I, I, I think uh, Ryan said that uh, he read somewhere that, that these were not recommended for use in this tool. But I had it. I bawled and squalled about what a, how it was one of the poorest choices that I would have. Very, it was almost like, almost nothing coming out of there. It's there, it's definitely there, but there's not that much hanging out. So, uh, is that a, another gentler option? I don't know, I don't know that I'm gonna like it. I think I would probably just use the ProGuard. Uh, but, I'm, I don't know. I didn't necessarily like it in the DX, but uh, figured I'd try that. And I'm I'm running up against time here because I'm a ratchet jaw, and so uh, against the green pass for me. I'm finding that for me, this closer grip is not. This is a little bit more, and I love the. I love the I love the jimps on there. Okay, so this is a feather blade. This does cut. You do have to go up, I think, at a little steeper angle. Uh, geometrically, you would have to think so. So it does work. I do love this tool. <laughs> Did I say I love this tool? Okay, so three passes. It's a great shape. I'm going to off camera do a little bit more of a clean up here rather than to keep going. But uh, I want to thank you guys for turning in, tuning in. I wanted to go through that with the blade changes and some options 
the available for the piece. I still, I still highly recommend this piece. Um, I do like this piece better than this. This is a nice piece, DX. It's nice. They're great. I'm not going to sell mine. I'm not going to throw it away. Okay. Uh, but I'll keep, I'll keep it around and I'll keep a blade loaded in there. And I found one interesting thing I found until I learned to, and even after I learned how to hone my razors was sometimes because this was no cleanup, no nothing. I was like shave with it. The quick shave I did with this and I did no, no stropping, no drying the razor, no worrying about rust. Pretty much the same thing here, except it's a good idea uh, to take the blade out of it. So, uh, uh, the flavor of the day, Sterling Island, Island Man, it's really great. Uh, big shout out to the guys at the 30 day crew on the shave den. Uh, it is the place where I learned, uh, the principles of good shaving that I apply all the time. I salute you and the creator of this great tool and, all of those who went before me and those who will follow me, I salute you. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening.